welcome to episode 7 of the Cherry Bakewell Diaries. We were today going to be doing a question and answer session, but what I've decided to do is to incorporate the questions um, in with recipes. So as I do a recipe, if you've got a question about that recipe, we'll incorporate it into that. So the question I had today was regarding quiche, um, how to stop getting a soggy bottom. So I'm going to actually make a quiche today and show you my tips of what to do. I actually make my own pastry, but you can use shop-bought pastry if you want, but you might need to adjust your timings on the oven slightly. Um, it might need slightly longer, but I'm going to show you a couple of tips today that's going to actually help to stop getting a soggy bottom. OK, so I'm going to be making a quiche Lorraine today, which is cheese and bacon, but you can put whatever fillings in you want. Um, so I'll go and get everything ready and I'll see you back here in a minute. Hello and welcome back. So we're just about to make the quiche. I've got 250 grams of plain flour in my bowl. And what I use is stalk margarine in the block. Um, but other margarines you can use as well, but it has to be in the block. Um, so whichever one you decide to use, uh, that's fine. Uh, you can use butter if you prefer, but as I've said in the past, I prefer margarine in my stuff because it's cheaper and I think it gives a lighter texture. So you need 150 grams of stalk. You just break that in to your flour. Make sure everything is really cold as well. That's another tip what I'll give you. Um, everything has to be really, really cold. 150. There we go. So 150 grams and then give that a mix, like rub, rub the margarine into the flour. Just nice light movements. Try and lift it up if you can to get lots of air into it. And you just keep rubbing the margarine into the flour until you've got fine breadcrumbs. doesn't take very long and there's a couple of tips I'm going to show you um, to help you stop getting a soggy bottom now a lot of people when they do their quiche they bake it blind which means once you put your pastry in the tin you put a layer of baking paper on the top and then you put rice or uh, baking beans or pasta or something on top of the paper and then you bake it for 15 minutes um, with that on and then you remove it and then you put your filling in well I found that if you do that your pastry shrinks if your pastry shrinks then the egg and the milk mixture or the egg and the cream mixture as I'm using um, will actually go over the top of the tin so if you've got your tin if you're putting your pastry up to there even if you put the pastry a little bit higher it always shrinks when it cooks so you're left with a little bit of a gap uh, uh, along the top of the tin. So when you put your egg and your milk mixture in, it goes down the back of the tin behind the pastry and it sticks, sticks the egg to the tin. And for one thing, it's hard to get out. And also it gives you a soggy bottom as well. So there we go. There's the margarine. You can see it's nice fine breadcrumbs now. I'll just quickly wash my hands and then, then we add just a little bit of salt to the mixture just a little bit of salt and then to combine it together what I use is two and a half tablespoons of cold water it has to be really cold so put it in the fridge before you use it and then what I do is I've got four eggs. Now we're not going to use all four eggs. We're going to use we're going to use the four eggs, but not in the pastry. So you break your four eggs into a bowl. Because you need a little bit of egg in your pastry. But obviously you don't want too much egg in there. So I found this way works works the best so 
whisk your eggs, beat them up, like that. And then what I do, I take about, about a tablespoon of the egg, maybe a little bit more, almost two tablespoons, and mix that in with the water so that you've got a little bit of egg in with your water. And then you use that Use that in your pastry to bind it together and that should be enough because you don't want it too wet if the pastry is too wet that's another way that it can get soggy and you can see that's that's all clumping together nicely now so what you do is you pop your hand in and you just squeeze it together it's quite a crumbly pastry, but it's it's actually really nice with the quiche. So bring it all together. See, and it's just the right amount of liquid. So it's between one and a half and two tablespoons of egg um, that you put in with your water. And then we'll just get some flour. And you just bring it together. Just give it a little knead. Now, as I say, it's quite a crumbly pastry, so you've got to be very carefully, be very careful when you roll it out. So, let's roll it out very, very gently. Keep turning it as you go. To keep that circle now you can see the fat coming out of the pastry because there's a high fat content in it or higher than normally because normally when you do a short crust pastry you do half the fat to flour well this has got um, more fat so it's going to be a very short short pastry and it's nice and light and crumbly as well so you just keep turning it, maybe half a turn at a time, quarter of a turn at a time even, until you get the size that you want for your quiche tin. And you don't want it too thin because that's another thing that will make the pastry soggy. So this should be the right amount of pastry. I've actually got a nine inch tin, nine inch quiche tin, which is about 23 centimetres. Okay, so I think we're almost there. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to gently lift that up, put the rolling pin underneath like that. Okay, lift it up and then lay it on our tin. Now just do it very, very gently, because it will crumble. Very, very gently, push it in. Just use the piece of your hand, the piece of your finger, and just push it into the edge, down the bottom of the tin. And then what I do is I just press it in like that. Just press it over the edge. And then what I do is just trim the edge of the tin. Just go around the edge and trim your tin. Take the extra off. And then once you've trimmed it, just gently push the pastry up. So push the pastry so it's just slightly proud of the top of the tin. So it's just slightly above the tin. So go all the way around, just take your time. 
And what you don't want is you don't want any cracks in your pastry. So make sure there's no cracks in the pastry because if there's cracks in the pastry, the egg and the milk will seep through the pastry and that will also make you have a soggy bottom and it will actually stick to the tin. So there, I've gone all round now. So it's just a little bit above the top of the tin. Okay, so then all you do then is you just put holes in with a fork in the bottom of the tin. That's just to let any air out. Okay, all the way over like that. And then what I do with my pastry now, I pop this in the fridge. Don't put any egg and milk in this as it is now. You must pop this in the fridge and it must chill for a good 30 to 45 minutes in the fridge. It's got to be very, very cold before you can actually put your mixture in. So pop that in the fridge. I'll probably say about 45 minutes is ideal because then it'll be nice and chilled. And then come back, I'll show you how to fill it and then we'll go from there. See you in a minute. Hello and welcome back. So I've just taken the pastry case out of the fridge and it's lovely and chilled and cold. Um, so that should work nicely now. So what we do, the four eggs that we whisked up earlier on to put a little bit into the pastry, the rest of it we're going to add to the cream. So we've got 300 mils of single cream and you pour the rest of that beaten egg into your um, cream and then you whisk that to combine those two together and I found that the cream works better than milk. If you use milk um, it tends to soak through the pastry as well so the cream is a little bit more stable because it's thicker and uh, it doesn't soak through so much so that's that all combined and then we just add a little bit of salt and pepper to taste and as I say I'm doing a quiche Lorraine today but you can do cheese and onion quiche you can um, put tomatoes in it, you can do whatever you want, whatever you fancy. There, I'll put that to one side for a minute. Now what we've got is, is 300 grams of mature cheddar cheese and you sprinkle that into your quiche, about half, put into the bottom of the quiche. Just cover the bottom, like that. And then I've got some bacon. I've got three rashers of smoked back bacon. Now you don't have to use smoked, you can use normal unsmoked if you want. As I say, you can put onions in if you want to, it's entirely up to you. But the traditional quiche brain is bacon and cheese. So we just put a layer of that in. And then we put another layer, put a bit more bacon in that. Then we put another layer of cheese. I'd use the mature cheddar because that's that gives a nicer flavour. I'll just leave a tiny little bit in there. Then we pop the rest of the bacon into there. Lots of bacon. And let's say that was three rashes of back bacon, so that's plenty to do a couple of layers like that. And then the rest of the cheese. You just sprinkle on the top, like that. And that's it. And then all you do is you pour in your liquid. One thing I will say, only put your liquid in as soon as it's going to go in the oven. Don't put your liquid in and leave it in the tin for a little while because it, it, tend, it will tend to soak through once you leave it. So when you know you're going to put it in the oven, put your cream and your egg mixture in just before you're about to cook it. So you pour that in. Should just be the right amount. There you go, and you just press it down because you don't want it too full because if it's too full, that's when it leaks out. So there you go, just push it down like that. 
make sure everything's covered. Then that goes into um, an oven, gas mark six, which is 200 degrees. Now what I do is I cover my quiche with foil, just lo loosely like that. Because if, if the top of the quiche gets too brown, then the pastry underneath won't cook. So for the first 50 minutes, do 50 minutes on gas mark six, and just lightly cover it with your foil. Uh, that's why I've not filled the egg and the cream mixture up to the top, because we don't want the, the, that touching the foil. So pop that in the oven, and then after 50 minutes, remove your foil and cook it for another 15 to 20 minutes on top of that. Probably about 15 minutes is enough after that. Okay, so come back in a while and I'll show you it all cooked. Hello and welcome back. I've just cooked the quiche and it took 50 minutes with the foil and then another 15 minutes afterwards. But as I say, you can go up to another 20 minutes after you've taken the foil off because um, you need the top to be nice and golden. I'll just show you what it looks like. That's your quiche, and it needs to be nice and golden on the top, all the way over, nicely risen and nice and golden. And there's a slice I've cut so that you can see. Beautiful, and it's lovely and crisp on the bottom. The pastry is lovely and crisp. So I hope you enjoy that. Enjoy your quiche. Um, next week, i probably do some bread next week. Um, I might do either a cheese and onion bread or focaccia bread next week um, because the recipes seem to be quite popular at the moment so I'll keep doing recipes for you. As I say, if you've got any suggestions for recipes, please let me know and I'll give it a try for you. Um, so next week we'll do bread and this week enjoy your quiche. Have it nice warm with, with a bit of salad or something like that. Enjoy.